guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my living room, yeah. So I'm currently in my sweatpant overalls, um, hashtag pregnant. Today, I am super excited because I'm back not only with another food video, but I'm kind of fulfilling a request that a lot of you have had, and that is for me to make food that is affordable. Today, this video is sponsored by Aldi, and I'm super excited because I love Aldi. Not only because their prices are like basically impossible to beat, they have such good price points, but also they carry so much quality food, like specifically in the organic department, their prices like blow my mind. Whenever Dan and I check out of Aldi, we are always shook as to how much we can get from Aldi on a specific budget. Now for today's video, Aldi wants to help you, me, everyone, hack the holidays by showing you how Aldi is a one-stop shop with the best prices so that you can have a high quality, delicious meal, however you holiday, at an affordable price. I know I keep hitting that point home, but seriously, if you watch any of like the budget moms on YouTube or people that specifically shop around tight budgets, it is incredible how great the price points are at Aldi. And on top of that, honestly, even more than that, like I mentioned, how much high quality food that they have. So in today's video, I was able to create a holiday menu idea and the food was delicious and I was able to get every single item from Aldi. So that kind of takes the guesswork out of the prep. I didn't have to like hit up multiple stores. They literally had everything. Just in general, I'm really excited about this video because spoiler alert, you know I love giving spoiler alerts. The food that Dan and I made because we cooked together in this video, I love cooking with Dan, turned out so delicious. Like seriously so good. We were groaning while eating the entire meal. Not that you needed to know that, but you also needed to know that. And like I mentioned, I love Aldi. Like I was legitimately so excited at the opportunity to get to partner with them on this. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the meals. Hopefully Aldi can help you guys simplify this holiday season and be like a one-stop affordable shop for you and your family's meal needs, meal ideas. And with that being said, let's hop in and cook some delicious food. All right, so the way that Dan and I decided to cook these meals was as if we were cooking for a dinner event that night, which I mean, we kind of were because we wanted to eat this food anyways. So the first thing that Dan did was peel the butternut squash that we had picked up at Aldi. And after he peeled it, he cubed the squash into small bite-sized pieces. This, by the way, is going to be a part of the butternut squash and apple bruschetta. Yes, it is as good as it sounds. So then it was my turn to dice up the apples as well. I cleaned the apples, but I ended up keeping the skin on them. So once I was done chopping, I transferred the butternut squash and the apples to a bowl to toss in a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. Then I transferred my mixture to my baking sheet and I threw the mixture into the oven. I wanna say around 400 degrees for like 20, 25 minutes. I remember I just kept checking the oven to see when I was happy with the amount that everything had been roasted. So I wanted it kind of golden brown. So then Dan took a white onion that we also picked up at Aldi So I get a lot of comments about my knife skills or lack thereof. 
knife skills. <laughs> and Dan is my opposite. As you can see, to those of you that care about how things are chopped, it's probably much more satisfying to watch Dan chop veggies. So he chopped up that onion. And we took some fresh garlic. We only cook with fresh garlic. I get a lot of questions from people including my own mother recently, which is ironic because the main dish in this menu, the lasagna that we're going to make, was inspired by my mom. But my mom asked me recently, like, do you ever cook with pre-crushed or frozen garlic? No, never. I personally think it tastes entirely different and it is so beyond worth the extra like minute of work to peel and crush fresh garlic. So at this point we threw the onions into a pan with some butter and then Dan took this chicken that we also picked up at Aldi and as you can see it is organic, free range, and non-GMO by the brand Simply Nature and he diced it into pieces to cook with the onions and the butter. By the way this Simply Nature brand from Aldi is one of my favorites that they carry. They have a lot of great brands and actually 90% of the store consists of their own private label brands. And these brands are super high quality and I actually think that's part of how they're able to keep the prices so affordable. I'm not even kidding you. The other night I was with a friend and we went off on a whole conversation about how amazing this Simply Nature brand is and how many different organic non-GMO items that they produce. By the way, I added some garlic to the pan as well. And then I took these two boxes of mushrooms that I also picked up at Aldi, as well as this zucchini. And we diced this up into little pieces for our lasagna. So once all the veggies were diced up, I put a little bit of avocado oil. Don't ask me my reasoning between picking avocado oil or butter sometimes. I just kind of change things up. I added some salt and some pepper. By the way, while I was doing that, Dan actually sliced up this French baguette that we also picked up into bite-sized pieces for the bruschetta that we were making. And that is also Dan flipping those veggies. I don't have those kind of skills either. I stick to the wood spoon, people. <laughs> So at this point, it was time to make the cream sauce because I've actually never made a cream sauce lasagna until now. I've always done tomato sauce lasagnas. And when we were in California for our baby shower, my mom made us a cream-based lasagna for our family dinner and it was so good. So shout out to you, mom, you inspired this recipe. So as you could see, I added, yes, an entire stick of butter as well as a hefty amount of garlic. I want to say that was like four cloves or something. And then I took a little bit of flour and I started to kind of add that to the mixture while whisking up the sauce. Now, as you can see, it gets super thick. Don't be concerned about that. It looks like you know, you're sure you're doing something wrong. You are not, you're just creating the thickness that the sauce will need to be a creamier, cheesier sauce. So then we took this chicken broth that we also picked up at Aldi. How many times do I say that in this video? Does anyone want to keep count? Um, and I slowly emptied the entire carton into the mixture while continuing to whisk it. By the way, at this point, the veggies needed to be pulled out of the oven. In retrospect, we could have put these veggies on later, but I was still kind of learning the timing. I feel like that's a big part of cooking, obviously, and everything still came together perfectly. But I could have put these veggies in a little bit later. At this point, Dan took some fresh rosemary that we had and cut it, diced it, chopped it. I don't know what the proper wording for that is. And I had to step outside, by the way, to show you the sunset because it was so beautiful. The sun has been going down very early, which kind of makes me sad, but also the weather this time of year makes for just some gorgeous sunsets. 
So when I came back in the house, I pulled out the cheese that I wanted to use for this sauce. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I just pulled what I thought looked good. So I grabbed two cheeses from their Emporium selection line. I also got out some heavy whipping cream and then I added that to the mixture while Dan whisked. Then because I'm me, I added a little bit of white wine to the sauce and then I put in all of the rosemary that Dan had chopped up as well. Also, I added the two cheeses that I had gotten after I grated them, obviously, and then I threw in the chicken. And then we also put in all of the veggies that we had sauteed. So if at this point you're thinking that this looks like the heaviest, most divine meal ever, you are right. I will just tell you that. So I had these oven ready lasagna noodles for the lasagna, as well as this, yes, more cheese, mozzarella cheese. By the way, just cut into the pup cam. Bowser wanted to eat all of our food, let's be honest. He wanted to take all of it and eat all of it. But I said, no, Bowser. You can't do that. So at this point, the lasagna was ready to assemble. So I put a thin layer of sauce on the bottom. Then I took my lasagna noodles and I laid down my first layer. After I put those noodles down, I ladled in some more sauce. Then I took some of this Simply Nature, I'm telling you I love this brand, organic baby spinach, and I laid down a bunch of baby spinach as well as some of the mozzarella we had sliced, and then I just kept building it. More noodles, more sauce, more baby spinach more mozzarella, more noodles, and so on and so forth, people. Then Dan got very excited to step in and put the foil over the top of the lasagna. He loves doing things like super detailed like this. And I try to learn from him. Old me would just slap the foil on top, throw it in the oven. But you know, little things like this even, he does so well. I try to steal his techniques of doing everything with my best effort wherever I can in life. At the same time though, you guys know I like to fly by the seat of my pants. Anyways, what you are seeing me do right now is take the extra stuff that we had, the extra noodles, extra sauce and I built a second lasagna to just cook up using some leftover red sauce I had in the fridge because at this point I had used up all of my cream sauce and I decided to just cook this up so that I could freeze it. You guys know I am going to be doing a dedicated freezer meal video hopefully as we prepare for the fourth trimester but any chance that I get to kind of bonus cook or cook quote unquote too much and freeze it I will take it. So at this point, the lasagna came out of the oven and it looked and smelled amazing, but an important part of lasagna is letting it sit and set for like 20-ish minutes. So we set it to the side and then at this point, I took the little baguette pieces that Dan had cut up and I added some butter to the bread and threw the bread slices into the oven. Now while those were in the oven, I took some avocado oil and some more garlic because just like lemon juice, guys, you can't ever have too much garlic if you're me. <laughs> and I threw in my mixture that I had made a little bit earlier for the bruschetta and I tossed it up, not only to kind of reheat it, but also just to coat it in garlicky goodness. And then while that was heating up, I opened up this garlic and herb goat cheese that I also picked up at Aldi. Side note, pup cam again, Bowser had relocated to this area to lounge and pine for our food. So um, anyways, I took the bread out of the oven and I took the garlic and herb goat cheese and I spread it across the bottom or the top, you know, where I had put the butter. Now 
then this process is a little difficult a little tedious but 100 percent worth it at least it was a little tedious on the tiny pieces of bread I took a scoop of the mixture and added it to the top of each piece of toast Next up, I took some balsamic glaze. I had some on hand, but you can actually make it from scratch. And I drizzled that on top of each piece of toast. And then I took some of my favorite chunky sea salt and drizzled that on top as well, dropped it, whatever the word is. And then at this point, we felt like the lasagna had cooled and set enough, so Dan pre-cut actually all of the slices because we wanted to freeze whatever else we didn't eat for dinner that night. So he cut that up and then I stepped aside to make the world's simplest salad. Sometimes I think we think of salads as like having to be this over the top thing, at least I do. But really, if you have a good dressing, you could just have some high quality greens. And these were organic greens, once again, from Simply Nature. And I just threw them in a bowl and I topped the salad with my absolute favorite homemade dressing. Dan and I are both obsessed with this. It's so simple to make and I feel like it tastes good with like any type of salad combination. And then guys, that was the dinner. Oh my gosh. We loved every single bite of it. We felt like we were eating like a king and queen. It was affordable, high quality, filling, and delicious for a night in, or like I said in this video, if you were serving it to a larger group. I think that this is a meal that would go over well with so many people. Okay, so moving on to dessert. I was super excited about this because I have wanted to make something like this for so long. Don't ask me why, but I've never done it. And that is baking fruit and making it into like a creamy dessert with like a mascarpone or an ice cream. And so today I decided to take pears because pears are one of my favorite fruits and they are in season right now. I did pick up these organic Bartlett pears at Aldi, by the way. I cut them in half, took out the center, and then I scooped some more butter because we haven't had enough butter tonight, guys. And I smeared that. That's not the right word. I put it, I don't know, I put it in the pears, guys. Then I drizzled a little bit of honey and added a little bit of chunky sea salt to the top and threw them in the oven, I believe at like 300, 350 degrees. And same thing, I just kind of monitored them. I think I checked them after like 10 minutes. Then I had a few macadamia nuts left over in my fridge. And so I decided to chop these up to kind of make them candied for the top of our dessert. So I basically just put some more butter in a pan, threw in the macadamia nuts, and then I added a little bit of maple syrup and I think a little vanilla extract too. And I just let these cook up for like two to three minutes just to get a little toasty. Oh my gosh, it smells amazing. And then when the pears were complete, we took them out of the oven. And then I took some of this specially selected vanilla ice cream, also from Aldi. Specially selected is one of their brands. By the way, this ice cream is delicious and there's not like a ton of ingredients in it, which I always like. Then we took some of the candied macadamia nuts, threw those on top, and uh, honestly, watching this and doing this voiceover is kind of making me upset and happy at the same time because it was so good. If you've been wanting to make a dessert like this, don't hold back any longer. Take the plunge. It was amazing. So yeah, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know so many of you had wanted to see me do something like this and getting the opportunity to partner with Aldi has been very exciting for me. So thank you, Aldi, for sponsoring this video and for being an awesome girl 
grocery store that's actually working to bring quality food to everyone at such an affordable price point. Hopefully Aldi can help you guys simplify your food this holiday season. And I think that's about it. By the way, if you're still hearing my voice, don't forget to check the info box because I will have all of the rules, which do slightly change each time for today's giveaway. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you back here soon. All right. Bye guys.